All righty. Kalimba. Hello. Awesome. It's working. Welcome, man. How are you doing there? I'm good. I hope it's going to work because I'm not on my computer. I couldn't get on the computer, so I'm on the um, iPad. All is good. It looks great. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll just share a few words here. I met Kalimba, for those at home, I met Kalimba last week at a... Um, it was like a wild expression voicing and sounding workshop, wasn't it? It was. And we were, <laughs> we were using our voice, we were playing with instruments, drums, hand pan, and just like allowing the wildness to come through. And we spoke just before this workshop, and I heard that you had lived with ticks or Tourette's at some point in your life. So that's the reason why I asked you to have this conversation today. And so I'm kind of happy to just drop in and feel into your journey and to get to know you a little bit better as well mm -hmm. yeah yeah how did you find the raw expression workshop um oh i love it i love it <laughs> <laughs> i yeah i can really feel like um i kind of get into a flow state so i'm almost in a trance state and then mm. um yeah i'm just sometimes i'm really surprised what comes through <laughs> Um, and, uh, yeah, I love those kind of voice activation things and, um, co-creating. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Right. There's something like growing up in the UK for me, I didn't really have the opportunity or the permission, I think, to allow myself to express certain parts of myself. And so spaces like this is like another level, isn't it? Of just like, it's okay to just, just make sound <laughs> yeah just make sound right <laughs> and yeah and be like children again you know, yeah I think, you know some <clears throat> some people might maybe myself include missed out on being a child and that freedom to do what you yeah what you fully want to express and you can be silly and you can be angry and you can be sad and you can be all those things through the voice or through playing instruments and stuff so yeah that's why i yeah, think right. i'm enjoying it <laughs> yeah right so so really thank you for having this conversation because i know we hardly know each other and i just like can we have a chat can we record it and let's just see what happens so just uh making sure that those that watch this in the future get that understanding here at the beginning so i want to i want to i want to hear your journey your story of like you said to me you lived with was it tourettes or ticks and when did it happen how long did you have it for because you didn't have it as a kid, right? I think it came on later on in life. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm guessing my time kind of idea of time is not not too accurate. <laughs> um, but I'm guessing uh, it was probably about five years ago. Mm -hmm. So like 2018, I believe. Um, and I was... I hadn't had it as a child. And um, I was kind of long story but i was invited to go to this workshop that was just called embodiment workshop and i'd met the guy before and i found him interesting and i was i was um, a trained alexander teacher at the time so i thought it would be useful in my practice um to yeah to do some just stuff that that will help with my clients and stuff so anyway I was there and it was all kind of resonating with me and um, a lot of the theme, it doesn't really say, was about love, the power of love and which I thought, oh, that's, that's kind of a new thing for me to kind of get to relate. Um, but one thing we did was we, we pushed against each other with our hands mm. and when you thought of something nice about the person, just thought you became physically stronger in your body. And when you just the thought thought of something unkind about the person, you became quite wobbly. So you became quite unstable. And that just kind of fascinated me as a body worker. Uh, you know, what was, what's, what's that all about? <laughs> kind of thing. So that was kind of the theme, I think, of this four day um, workshop. And anyway, one part of the workshop was we were laying on the ground and another person, body work, would put their hands on, just gentle kind of touch. And during that, my left shoulder was kind of moving. I can't really move it that fast, but it was kind of moving quite fast. And the instructor said, oh, my name was Mark then. 
um, he said, what's going on um, there? And I said, oh, it's just something that happens when I lie down in my practice, when I lie down, and it feels like something's releasing from my body, so it doesn't bother me or anything. And he said, would you like to explore this in a standing position? And I said, yeah, okay. You know, so the group was kind of sitting and watching and, and this is where it gets a bit strange. He said, he said, he was standing about three yards or meters away and he said, just invite it in. I didn't really cognitively understand what he was saying. But it felt like somebody lifted me up from my armpits and was pushing me into a back bend. And I kind of threw myself, well, I didn't throw myself. I felt like I was being thrown against the wall. And then I fell down the wall and I started crying. And it was like something from The Exorcist. It was like an out-of-body kind of experience, but a very in-body experience. And... Then he said, he said, he was like this old guy, he'd got um, full blown Parkinson's, but he's the sweetest guy ever, and done a lot of Aikido and other things. And he said, um, okay, what we're going to do now, Mark, is you're going to lie on the floor and I'm going to stand over you and I'm going to teach you how to throw me. And he did that, and I was like, not questioning anything. And I was like, oh. looking back, I think he saw that I was experiencing some kind of traumatic event and he wanted me to take my power back. I never really had a deep conversation with him about this and I probably should, but that's another thing that I don't tend to go to authority figures and talk things out. Which Can now relate I do. To that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I was like, oh, that was interesting. They went home. My partner wasn't there. He was away. And I thought, oh, I can just invite it in. So I placed some cushions around my bedroom thinking, oh, this feels like I'm out of control and I could throw myself down the stairs, thinking, actually, I'm not going to throw myself down the stairs. But anyway, I did that. And sure enough, as soon as I said invite it in, my body started to kind of wobble and kind of tip. So then I was like, OK, tried to kind of relax, had my supper, went to bed. I think 2 or 3 a.m. in the morning, I just woke up and my hand involuntary was just moving all over my body. And I I had this thing like a tinnitus in my ear and it kind of went around my skull and then the tinnitus kind of went. I mean, it was just weird. And then my left hand just like moved, but really like a hundred times faster than that. I've just moved it then. And again, it didn't, weirdly, it, none of it freaked me out. I wasn't freaked out. I wasn't, I was just like, oh, it's like my body's doing it itself. Um, so I went back the next day and it kind of turned into more facial tourette. So I was talking like this and like, you know, and that kind of thing. And that was really kind of alien to me. But then in a little discussion in the group, somebody, I mentioned intimacy. And when I said intimacy, my face really screwed up. And somebody pointed out that my face did something weird when I said the word intimacy. So I went home and I was just curious. Again, there was no fear. I've done a, you know, as a bodywork therapist, I was like, my body's trying to tell me something or teach me something. Mm. and so I thought well I'm going to listen <laughs> and I started to video myself and when I was saying certain words so if I said my dog's name my face would brighten up if I said you know somebody else's name I would do something else and when I said my dad's name my face kind of went to one side now he'd had a stroke so I don't know if it was that or that I had quite a tricky relationship with my father. So anyway, I was just like quite fascinated by it, really. Um, and then I would say different, different kind of words. And at one stage, I, um, 
I went through the years of my life because I thought, oh, I wonder if something happened I wasn't aware of because I've always felt, you know, a little bit different and a little bit, you know, like, well, I don't know, odd around other people and a bit of a shy child and stuff like that. And I did it. I didn't actually video it the first time, but I, I videoed and different things happened in my body as I thought of different years of my life when I was two years old, when I was three years old, blah, 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 blah. Didn't really, wasn't really paying attention. And then when I said I was 48 years old, literally it felt like somebody punched me in the stomach and I bent over and I just cried, sobbed. And as soon after the event, I realised that was the age I was when my mother died. So, um, yeah, it, it, yeah, that's kind of the gist of when it all started. I, w I went back on the last day and I was, I couldn't really join in. I was unconsolable. I was crying. My body was shaking. Somebody stayed with me. But it, it kind of, yeah, it kind of increased, basically. You have... Um... It's really fascinating hear, hearing your story through your lens upon the world, right? Because you have a very somatic seeing of the relationship between this conditioning and the movements and then the, the body, the trauma, the, your past. You can, like, you can see it. You could see the onset of it. And then we'll get into like how you move beyond it in a minute. But like a lot of the people that are watching this probably didn't see the onset of this condition with as much awareness as you did. And I, I loved how you described it. It's like something was invited into the system or the, or, or the being like there was a beingness an energy, something that was invited into the system. And it's kind of, this is where this thing began, whatever, it, whatever it, the thing is, but then you explored it. You, you explored it. Yeah, it's interesting how you could see so clearly when you spoke different words, how the tick changed, right? How the tick changes based on what you're focusing on. This is really insightful for, I think, um, people that I work with, with this condition. It's like, when do we tick more or less? What states of mind are we existing in? What emotional states are we or not existing in? Right? Where are we? Who are we around? All of these things affect our well-being in that moment and how maybe intense or anxious or tight or stressed we are. Right? And um and you're it sounds like you're very precise. I suppose this word whew, this word <laughs> that's that's really interesting to me. Yeah. I think it just I think it fascinated me, really. And and a word came a word kind of expression came to me. Your body doesn't lie. Hmm your body doesn't lie so it was like and I, because i've done quite a lot of body work in the past i was like and i could see that in my clients you know with their posture and, and trauma and all that kind of stuff it was like it was very clear to me my body has something to tell you if you just give it space to listen it will tell you and um, I just kept, I kept exploring. I, exploded. I did make a, like a video, um, which I put on YouTube because I was like, it was a bit like coming out again because with my partner, I ended up having to hide it because he was freaking out and freaked mm. out about that. And that, that obviously didn't help me. <laughs> so I was hiding it from people to a certain degree, which is effort and hard. A lot. And I ended up making a video and even just coming on and having the camera and my face, my face was screwed up and I was like, oh, I don't really like being on. I don't like being seen. And then and then I thought, well, actually, if I just change my perception, I, I can change it. I can change it. And um, so that's kind of how I was working with it in the beginning. And then and then I, I think I got braver with it. And I remember being on a train once and I was like, I wasn't really suppressing it, but I was like, what if I just didn't suppress it? And nobody took a blind bit. No, it was, it was none of my business what they thought anyway, was it really? So, um, <laughs> which is something that I've learned, you know, becoming more spiritual over time. And then I did um, a big kind of weekend full of workshops where there was about 100 people. And I stood up in the beginning because I thought, I'm not going to enjoy this if I can't be my true self. 
and I'm going to be like worried about what people would think if they see my tics and blah, blah, blah. And I don't want people to feel sorry for me and I don't want to be a victim. And, blah, blah, blah. and anyway, I just stood up and said, uh, you know, I've got this thing, body tics and, you know, you might just see me. I'm not having a fit. I'm okay. Um, blah, 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 blah. And, um, of course, once I'd done that, I didn't tick for you know, the next few hours, but um, <laughs> but it did come through quite strongly later, actually, quite somatic ex- ways and experiences. Yeah. So where in your body were the ticks mainly? Because you mentioned about your face a bit. What, what Was it here, neck, shoulder, arm, legs, where, like everywhere? How was um, it? Mainly, I mean, it did go through quite a facial stage but that facial stage didn't last long well it did last a long i suppose but um it was quite a lot of shoulder and neck my head would suddenly go like like that and um yeah so um yeah and a bit a bit um a bit bit facial and i think sometimes kind of it is a little bit there still um but in a good way because it's informing me oh there's a feeling now of sadness or there's a feeling now of anger i mean sometimes my i get this feeling that i just want to do that i just want you know i'm feeling frustrated and i want to express that you know my body wants to express that i can relate to this this these last comments a lot it's like like I've healed my ticks, right? I'd say, but there's still, there's still elements deep inside me where I'm feeling that my body wants something or needs something. Mm. And like, if I don't, if I don't look after and listen to my body at the moment, it's wanting to move then. And I, and I ignore it and I push it down and I keep ignoring it. I keep ignoring it. Yeah. I can feel the tightness in my body wanting to move again, Mm. but I live nowadays with such like with much more presence than I used to have. Mm. And so like you described it there, it's like the body wants to tell me something. Why am I feeling a little bit uh, jittery inside right now? Right. Why am I feeling a bit jittery? Oh, I'm, I'm focused too intensely on my computer right now. Oh, okay. Take a breath. And then my body relaxes. It's like the body doesn't lie, like you said. The body mm. knows the score. That's a famous, a famous book, right? In the body yeah. workspace. And Got that it's like, on my <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> and um, it's like it knows. So if only we listen. Something that I I talk a lot, uh, I say a lot to my clients is, it's like the body or the tick is like your inner child just trying to talk to you. It's like it's like listen like you would listen to a little child Mm. if uh, a child is playing up what would you do you wouldn't get angry at the child or sometimes that might happen but we're trying to learn to bring love and presence to that child inside of us that's how Mm. i like to see it these days yeah yeah and the way i see it um is i ended up doing quite a lot of somatic work with a with a therapist after that um Mm. well a little bit later on and my body really just did act things out. And, you know, I recognized a lot of things um, that I wasn't, you know, I wasn't as a child, I wasn't allowed to express anger. And, yeah. you know, I come from an era where my father would say, if you don't stop crying, I'll give you something to cry about. And um, those sorts of things, which are not great, obviously. But I was, I didn't realize how much I suppressed emotions and and actually after my mother died i think emotionally i shut down from everything so i wasn't allowed i wasn't able i didn't even know that was a thing that you could shut down emotionally i wasn't able to express or feel the the pain but also i wasn't able to feel the joy and i think that's something that i learned as a child to shut down of course, when I came out of that, suddenly I was like, whoa, and then I was experiencing a lot, you know, there was a lot of sadness and there was a lot of anger and rage. And over time, I've been able to find ways in safe spaces to express that through breath work, through plant medicine, 
Um, and through dance and singing, I do a lot of those and I find that a great way to express. I'm a big fan of expressing. We need to, right? God, yeah. we need to. Uh, I can relate as a, as a kid. I don't think I ever had healthy, loving, open, free moments or spaces in my life growing up in Britain where I could and would express my life was on computer <laughs> like literally my work my 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 playing my gaming like i spent hours in front of the screen and in doing so like i didn't i didn't know how to move outside of the the constraints of this thinking mindy thing it was like but there's a whole body there's ex primal expression there's there's playfulness there's silliness there's joy right there's all this absurdity that i i, I still call it absurdity because it's life is like an endless joyful expressive dance isn't it like we're here we have this body we have a life what kind of life do we want to create what journey do we want to be on and it's like an infinite in potentiality but usually yeah. we're we're on a particular path of dealing with our own stuff that we were kind of thrown into when we were kids you know <laughs> mm. Mm. yeah yeah i loved how you said about yeah the suppression of emotions holding back emotions not having channels for emotions to move through us and expression and dance and singing is one way of doing it breath work another way yoga like basically just learning to get the body going again right mm. um what other ways have you found um, on your journey to express and let's say move the energy of the system? Um, I did some tantra work um, mm. with different people and um, I think it's finding somebody that really resonates and will work with you. And I learned to kind of move the energy yeah, through my body and... Um, and I, I, I worked with a somatic guy. It was quite funny how it happened, really. Um, uh, interestingly, it was, a, it was a, a friend from Bali who lives on the property here where I live. And uh, he was in the UK. And I was in the UK and he had, he had a problem with his shoulder. And so it was really hurting. And so he's going to see this guy who does somatic experiencing. But I'd never really heard of that. Anyway, I said, oh, well, let me know how it goes. Came back a couple of days later. He said, oh, he said it was really interesting. Went to see this guy. Before he knew it, he was on the floor crying and his shoulder was better. And I'm like, well, I'm not in any pain. but And I wasn't really even experiencing the ticks at that point. They had calmed down quite a lot. Um, but I'm like, oh, give me a bit of that. Let's just give it a go <laughs> once. I was there for a year and a half every week. Mm -hmm. And he, I told him the story about the experience I had where I was picked up by my armpits and buried against the wall. And after that, he interestingly said the same thing. He said, just invite it in. Hmm. And when he did that, my body was just like looking around and like all this kind of stuff. And then, yeah, I kind of went into a cycle of feeling like, I don't know, I was being attacked or something and, and stuff came up. And I thought stuff would come up about both my parents passing and it was about grief. And it, I, don't, I don't think it was because there was stuff about bullying at school. Hmm. And not just the kids, the teachers. <laughs> I guess I went to a Catholic school. So all this hmm. stuff came up and I literally, my tics were helpful in helping me act it out almost. And I think there was something about being seen and heard by this professional and you're paying him money and he's, I'm being able to be seen and heard by this person. And I felt in a very loving way, I trusted him. But it kind of surprised me that my body could do that. It could tell stories and it could inform me of maybe things that happened to me. Now, later it took a little stranger turn and I felt I was embodying others like relatives so it was i was always doing like family constellations and um ancestral work with him but it made me it helped me to understand you know maybe some of the trauma that had happened in my ancestral line 
and that had happened to me that I wasn't even possibly aware of with this guy. So it was very powerful work. Very powerful work. I, I like how you shared that the tick, let's say there's a movement of a tick with the, with the eye or the nose or, you know, the neck. You know, these are common ones, right? And it's like, it's, it's as if there's like a stunted movement. Where does it really want to go? You know, where does the movement uh, really want to move to? You know, can we be so present with the movement that actually it, it might take us into an uncomfortable position or contortion, which actually is what the fascia tissue needs to like break free from some sort of tightness or density that's been created for many years. Mm. But most people or, or many people who have been living it, with it for a long time aren't ready to or haven't been ready to or maybe they are ready now by watching this video to go that next place to go to the next level of trusting that the body knows you use the words let just let it in just let it in right mm. like what does that what does that mean what does that mean for you can you articulate that a little bit further for, oh, uh, for I others was, I, I was curious i think there was a curiosity in me and i've not always had this curiosity <laughs> Um, and um, for some reason, I developed this curiosity. And I'm just like, oh, what if I just let my body do what it wants to do? And that's what I did. And I was surprised at what my body wanted to do. And it literally acted out different things. I acted out, it sounds, a bit, it sounds quite weird, I'm not going to lie. But I acted out my own birth, which I came out backwards. And something around my neck, which does explain some of the physical <laughs> problems that I have had um, with my spine and my back and my neck, especially. Uh, I acted out all sorts of weird, weird and kind of wonderful things. Um, but it was quite clear. It was quite clear what they were. And um, I think... For some reason, I just trusted it. And it is weird that I trusted it. I'm not going to lie, because my old self was a bit of a hypochondria and I would have been straight down to the doctors. What's this? Give me a brain scan. <laughs> and a lot of my friends were like, you need to have a MRI. You know, this is freaking us out. And I'm like, well, it ain't freaking me out, you know. <laughs> and, um, and it was strange that I wasn't having that. And I think, you know, this is part of the spiritual, you know, some kind of spiritual awakening i feel that i didn't think at the time i just thought oh i'm just i use the word embody i'm embodying this person or this thing and now well looking back i can see i was starting to channel hmm. you know channel um the energy of others which is something i never believed in i'm not you know i didn't believe in any of that i didn't believe in psychics and also until i went to one and they was like oh my god you know my dad my dad came through and he was arguing with the psychic and i was like well that's him <laughs> he was having a riot he was, he was having an argument. So I, she asked me sorry got off point a bit here but it's she, okay. she said to me oh you know was it a long drawn out death kind of thing, you know? And I didn't give her much information at all. And I was like, oh, no, he had a massive stroke on his birthday. And then he died two weeks later. And like a few minutes later, she was like, arguing. She went, she said, he's arguing with me, you know? She said it wasn't two weeks, it was more like three. And because it was his birthday, it was very easy to, to calculate. He died exactly three weeks later. Mm. So, you know, he's arguing me from the grave, which is... <laughs> so then you know that it's all built up my belief in the unknown of things that we don't know you know yeah, this... there's so much we don't we don't need to know it necessarily i was also formed that i don't need to know stuff just to trust it a bit more <laughs> when i when i look back at myself when i lived with these ticks for 20 years and i look at myself now and compare the two right uh this being now and this being before I think one of the ways that I could describe the big difference or the big shift is like um, less. Um, I'm no longer. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not closed thinking that I know anymore. 
Like I used to think that I knew. I'm right if I just keep learning, putting things in my brain, keep learning, keep building stuff on top of stuff to like create a brain that knows everything, right? That, that there's this constant, I can figure it out. I can figure it all out. I can get it. I can be right. I can be perfect. I can be really good. I can remember it all, right? I can, uh, it's a, the sum, the summation of our very intellectual society, a mindy world. And if I look at myself now, like I've learned to realize that there's no way that I could possibly know. <laughs> there's no way that I can know. I can't. Like I can't know it all. I can't. Like one of the first things I, 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 I speak to a lot of parents is that like we, there isn't more to know here. It's about dropping in another level and meeting your son and daughter at a different level of love. Can you meet them where they want to be met at? It's nothing to go and figure out. I've got to figure out all the steps to figure. No, it's can we drop in another level of presence and love and stillness and be with the part of this being that is 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 in pain, is in suffering, is some level picked up a little bit of trauma, whether it's at school or home, it doesn't matter. Pick something up and then they play out this un, unprocessed movement again and again and again and again and again until finally suddenly that movement can move in mm. perfect or orchestration of life and they're free again you know and mm. i've seen this happen again and again it's so beautiful listening I mean, to I your story with the you've picked up on a very good point it's the love really and i've yeah. been very fortunate to find like a therapist that i found that i felt very safe with for some reason straight away mm. and you know, looking back, I can see that there was much love there. And he really didn't actually say much to me. Or he said, you're great, Mark. You just like process on your own. All he does has, has to hold space for me. Mm. And that's what he does. He's a great space holder. And, and I'm lucky enough that I found that in certain plant medicine groups and breathwork places where I felt safe. And I think that's important that you can feel safe um and feel, feel that find that safety within yourself to be able to express um because we have all these stories in our head oh what are they going to think of me they're not going to love me that's a big one if i make these sounds or this do that this facial tick and you know as another spiritual thing it's none of my business what they think of me yeah it's what i think of me am i ashamed of these ticks am i um worried what might people might think am i a bad person because i've got these ticks no yeah. you love <laughs> you're just finding a way to express you know yeah this is so this is so true this is so true yeah just finding a way to express and at the moment the body's kind of trying to but there is if we open it's like can we open up the the what's the word? Like open up not the throttle but open up the canister or the container like wider like mm. can we like open up wider to allow more to move through us as opposed to the tightness of the the, the one area of the body that's ticking again and again it's like how mm. can we energetically open up as well right because mm. there's the, the physical tightness that happens with the same tick again and again and there's the the breath of life mm. can we do that you know oh yeah it's like, it's, it feels like yeah, I like that point because it's like, could we move towards rather than away? And I think, I think I've, you know, I've started to do that, well, quite a while ago now. But, you know, with, with strong emotions, I, I try and move towards them rather than away. So if I'm feeling sad, I won't try and push it down or grieve. I'll just kind of befriend it or just, you know, just see how it goes. And it usually passes through quite quickly. But even the same with anger, and anger's got a bad old rap, I reckon. And again, I will move towards it. Or if I'm in a safe space or I'm on my own, I'm lucky I live in on my own in the jungle, that I can express it. I can scream, you know, and or I can get a cushion and scream into a cushion or whatever. And I've done that, and I do do that, you know. And it's really thinking, oh, I'm bad because I shouldn't express anger. Anger's just a natural emotion but it i think maybe it gets stuck in the body and that's why we're tipping because we're just trying to control it and keep it all in uh, and we, 
can do and that's why certain dances like five rhythms i like because it gets to a point where the whole room maybe wants to express a bit of anger and maybe scream and stuff and it's it's great to be able to do that and then to to do that with others is also very healing as well i think so yeah yeah, anger has a very bad rap in our society. It's totally inappropriate for young kids to express anger, right? It's like we're shut down so quickly and told it's just not an allowed emotion. And it does get bottled up, doesn't it? It gets bottled up. I can relate to that yeah. for me too. Like, And I had to learn to... When did I start expressing anger well? Yeah, different programs I guess I did when I was living on Koh Phangan in Thailand. Moving the energy, screaming into pillows... Like vigorously shaking the body is great to get like the lower energy centers just like, like, mm. like alive, right? And it just needs to be alive so that it can move. We don't have to do the movement of the, of the emotion, the emotional move, yeah. but we have to get out the way to allow the emotion to move, right? And so that sometimes might mean just getting a bit, uh, ah, this is why people love the gym, I guess, as well. A lot of men love the gym, especially because yeah. like, we're, we're pushing ourselves to the edge and then we get to feel that, that, that edge of who we are. I haven't been a huge gym yeah. person in my life, truthfully. But, oh, well yeah. done. <laughs> I was for a little while, <laughs> but not for, not for about 10 years now. But I think, yes, certain things are good. Like running kind of makes sense to me why that's a popular thing to do because... Um, but what's just come to me is the fight flight response, you know, the starter reflex pattern, fight, flight, freeze or flop. And I recognized as a child, you know, I was at a Catholic school. We weren't allowed to, you know, run away. And, uh, you know, I wasn't fast enough to run away from the other kids or the teachers. And so we end up getting stuck in flop. I mean, my posture was just like very pulled down and freeze sometimes which i recognize and um, because i wasn't also as felt strong enough to fight and i wasn't going to fight my father because he was a big old fellow and he was a bit scary so we get stuck in these patterns and that makes sense why um running would be good because you're getting you're kind of training yourself to do mm. that it's never a very good runner so i didn't like running you know i did start running later on but the other thing i did was trauma release exercises and you're probably aware of trauma release exercises and that was really useful for me as well, because it didn't take for much for me, for my body to just automatically kind of shake. And the whole thing was just shaking, 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 shaking. And we, it feels like we are the only animals that don't do that. Another animal that gets chased, maybe gets a little wound or something, will go into their cave and they'll shake. And they might have run as well. Whereas we, it's, yeah, we're shamed sometimes. So you know, big boys don't cry and don't show anger in front of me. And you, you then you're stuck with it and you keep it in the body. And that's why shaking and all these things are, are so good, I believe. I, I, I agree, like, so deeply, 100%. TRE has only come into my life um, more recently, actually. I was recommended it seven years ago. And for some reason, I never felt, I don't know, it was never time or I allowed myself to give it a go or I never wanted to because it was too scary to go there. I don't know what the reason was, but I never did it for seven years until recently. And I've started recently doing TRE regularly. And there's still levels of density in my being that I'm just witnessing, just like we're shaking out. It's so good to feel yeah. the body doing what the body wants to do. If only we love we learn to love and also we learn to surrender surrender to the body yeah my body too finds it very easy we have a similar body makeup i think quite you know, yeah thin white <laughs> thin white person right you know and, and right and they're like to me when the hips just start moving by itself yeah. it feels uncomfortable it feels like there's stuff there like i feel like i want to like slightly shake slightly towards the right because my body's kind of been twisted and unbalanced with all the ticking mm. on the one side of my body for so much of my life my hips have become unbalanced my jaw become unbalanced right and so mm. the physical body become twist became twisted and although the ticks have gone now there's still like the the physical leftover ramifications of tissue and density and stuff and muscles that have kind of sh had to shape around the suffering that I existed in for so long. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah, I mean I don't I don't do it as a practice particularly, mm-hmm. but I will be laying in bed at night or I wake up in the morning and suddenly my body will just start to shake a little bit and I'll just Again, I don't stop it. I never stop it. I'm just like, oh, that's obviously what my body needs. My body's telling me we need a little, get rid of a little bit of tension here. Now, the other thing that's just come to mind now <laughs> is um, my body does other stuff now. It, and it doesn't, I don't even call, I don't call it tips. But it makes, sometimes it will make a, like a mudra or... Mm. Um, there'll be like funny like this kind of thing that will come we'd call it hearing my chakras and it sounds a bit funny and somebody said oh that's Mm. like that could be like a galactic and it sounds like galactic kind of healing kind of thing but it feels like it's doing something and it well it does do something and again i just trust it and it looks a bit odd to people maybe and i that might happen in a dance something i'm like None of my business. None of my business what they think. And it feels good to me. So I allow it. I allow it in front of people. And um, I think, you know, I think there's a bit of a weird, you know, I use the word, I feel a bit weird sometimes because I feel different to others and I'm having a different experience to others. It is what it is, you know. And maybe there's a part of me that quite likes that weirdness now. Mm. Yes, yes to being weird. Yes, to being the oddball. Yes, to allowing ourselves to be different to other people. Otherwise, yeah. we don't be ourselves. That's the purpose of it here. No, yeah. <laughs> being who we want to be. I, I, I also experience um, the movement of my hand, and um, when I'm in moments of surrender, more so, depending on how the day's going and where I'm currently at in my level of consciousness at that, that time. Like I do find that I'm more surrendered in certain moments. And when I'm surrendered in those moments, I can feel the body wanting to move, even the subtleness of the body. The hand mm. wants to go. And I too feel the relationship between my hand and the energy centers of the body. It's like, oh, okay, mm. it's like I've got to do something there. Okay. <laughs> mm. So I, I do that. And I see people on Instagram and TikTok and they call it light language, don't they? Like when mm. they speak, they're like, like da, 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 they, they speak these mm. different words and just allow a current to move through them in nonsense language but the same mm. thing happens with the hands as well we're just moving the energy with the hands aren't we and like it's yeah. can we find now in our world more acceptance to this new way these new frequencies these new energies and like i yeah i, I think more and more people are, are open to the idea that we also live in an energetic world not just this physical thing Right, we are subtle energy. We are. It's proven by the greatest scientists of our time. Everything is energy, and it's like we've all just forgotten that we can all see, relate, and connect to that energy at a really subtle level, because we haven't. It wasn't in our culture when we were young, so we didn't realize that we could do it. But we can, and now we're relearning yeah. again. Right, we're relearning how to do it again. Or well, they say remembering, don't they? Yeah, yeah, we're yeah remembering, remember. remembering who we are. Yeah. And, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, you picked up, pick up a few things that you said there, um, interestingly, light language. Yeah, the hand movements can be seen as a form of light language, as is you can write light language. And I started to speak light language. And that is related to the ticks, because I think I didn't really notice particularly, but I think the ticks became less when I started to speak light language. And again, I didn't believe in that. It's like speaking in tongues. I'm like, what? And, um, but when you start to experience these, and anybody could do it, you know, everybody's a healer and everybody can do it. In some ways, we just need to get out of the way and these things will come through. But I suppose living in the world that I live, I've met so many people that it's come through for, or I'm, I just, you know, I'm in the cleaners and somebody starts to talk, talk and then we're having this conversation and suddenly they say, oh, I speak like that. <laughs> and I think we all can keep it, try to keep it a bit of a secret. Again, it's a bit like the ticks because we're embarrassed. We feel a bit different. You know, what if we just didn't have that embarrassment? What if we just allowed ourselves to be, you know, how wonderful would it be, you know? <laughs> and I'm lucky that I kind of live in space and I've got older now and I don't give a shit. <laughs> and, I, 
I will allow it to come from this. Sometimes I think, which I'm working, something I'm working on at the moment is I'm too much, which could probably relate to some of your, the people watching this as well is, you know, having these body involuntary body movements. We can think we, where well, we might think I'm only going to be singing for myself when I make sound and you've heard some of the sounds I make. Um, I feel like there's a little conversation going, oh, Kalimba, you're, you're too much. You can be too much. And you might be triggering people. Again, it's none of my business. If it's coming through, it feels like it should come through. You know, I can have a conversation with somebody about it afterwards if they're, if they're interested. I'm very open to that. Um, but I think it's all about learning to trust, you know, learning to trust these things and to trust ourselves and bring a bit of love to all those aspects of ourselves, whether we're ticking, whether we're speaking light language, you know, whether we're angry, where we're bringing that into the space, you know, um, we can spread, express it, you know? So I'm not saying to everybody go around screaming at everybody because, you know, we don't want to scare the bejesus out of other people, but we can say, we can say, oh, when you said that thing, I feel anger. I can feel it in my body. How can I feel it in my body? Because I've got this, like, screw here that's suddenly feeling all this tension. It's not there, the problem. You're just reacting. You're, um, I suppose you're being triggered, and there's a reaction there. You know? So, yeah, I find it all, I find it all quite fascinating. Uh, you know, I get less triggered now, but I still get, you know, there's still... Sometimes I'm like, oh, okay. But I feel into my body and I'm like, okay, that's how I know. And I have a choice in how I react. And I can walk away. I can explain to the person. I can do lots of other things that I can do, like breathe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's definitely a level of suppression and holding back, like and not wanting to say what we need to say, what we really want to say to the people around us holding yeah. and holding and then we're like uh, uh, uh. I definitely relate deeply to this yeah so uncomfortable uh, isn't it in the body when we're in a situation oh. and we're really just you know uh, you know I just I hate it I, and I will just leave if I mm. really can't do anything about that situation and it's not it's not them it's my reaction to them or it's just a space where you know, I'm sober now, I, I, you know, I was never an alcoholic, but I can't, I, you know, I find it quite tricky to be in places where a lot of people are drinking because it's just not my thing anymore. But it used to be, mm. and I used to have a great old laugh. But now I'm just, I'm just not happy in that, in that space, you know, with that energy. So I have to move myself away from that space to a space where I can relate to people and have these kind of conversations. So... As we're gently coming up to the hour here, I want to ask you this question. Um, so if you were to speak to, let's say, yourself from 10, 20 years ago. Um, actually, if no, I'm going to rephrase that question. Um, what advice might you have to people who are living with this condition in their 20s or 30s? They're younger, a bit younger in life. You've got a bit more wisdom. You've been through it a bit. What what would you say to somebody who's living with this 20, 30 years, uh, who are like 20, in their 20s or 30s? Um, I'm going to have to feel into that. That's a very good question. Kind of what's coming through is, it's very difficult to say to somebody not to be scared, because if you're scared, you're scared. But my experience of it was not scary. So I hope you can take some power out of that. Um, and and it could be it could be that it's it's not all aspects of us that are scared. It could be that it's just our inner child part that is scared. This is something I've been working on recently. Is I was at a dance at a contact improv and I didn't want touch. Because touch is not always good. And at that moment, I did not want touch. I've gone to this contact in class. But I recognised that it was my inner child part that felt unsafe in that moment. 
Now, I didn't feel unsafe because I danced with some of the people before and I thought they were lovely. And my higher self didn't feel scared either. So I really just explained that to my inner child and I said, um, gosh, there's just big coconuts just falling from the tree. Um, I just said, you know, Kalimba's okay, higher self is okay. But we understand that there might be, um, you feel unsafe and touch is not always good. So we'll just sit here for the moment. And then a few minutes later, I checked in with that part of me and I said, how are you going? And they said, do you know, can we give it another go? I'm feeling okay now. <laughs> and we had another go. And guess what happened? We had some lovely connections with people and it was good. So I think what would my advice be is to see if you can connect to that younger part of yourself and maybe give it some of the love and patience and honour and respect that it didn't have when when you were that age, whatever age that is, whatever age you picture that is. Because it might be a specific age or it might be something different. Yeah, that's what's come, come through. Thank you for sharing this. Yeah, we we just danced through so many different topics. And there's like levels to all of this stuff we just talked about, of course, right? Um but it was it's really nice i feel to offer this glimpse like we live in a bit of a not a bubble but we live in a bit of a different world to a lot of people in the <laughs> cities <laughs> back in the west and we're lucky to have had the time the opportunity to step out of that way of living to see yeah. the world differently and to offer a perspective that often isn't seen back in you know the uk or america or canada or australia right it's a bit different and so hopefully we've uh, introduced to those watching at home just different concepts, a few different words, practices, tools, different ways of looking at like this condition with a bit more space and awareness and love. Because, you know, again and again, I have conversations with people who are in so much panic about the ticking or their kid who's ticking. So much worry and panic that it's like it's so difficult. And yet with some space and with some room, it is okay. It's going to be okay. There is opportunity to move um, beyond a condition. A condition is just a condition. It's a condition. The word condition is just now. It, conditions change. And it's yeah. like, how can we see beyond it too? And keep our trusting and allowing and um, listening to the intuition, listening to the heart to, to move freer. Because your body knows. The body knows. Keep listening to the body. That's our last few words here. Yeah, the, yeah, the, body, <laughs> the body keeps the score and the body knows. And it's amazing. Yeah. We have this amazing body and yeah. sometimes we just need to listen. Yeah. 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 So thank you so much, Klimba, for this chat. Thank you so much, brother. Like so much wisdom came through and this is going to, yeah, this would be really great to share on my channel. And hopefully those of you at home will find some value and um, yeah, uh, write some comments in what you took out of this, please, if you find that value and any other questions you have in the comments of the YouTube channel below, please, I'd love to hear from you and if you got, got something out of this. Alrighty, Kalimba, such a pleasure, brother.